everyone. This is Tom Moore from VikeFans.com, and today we're pleased to have Minnesota Vikings defensive tackle Tom Johnson joining us from Winter Park for our broadcast. Tom, thanks for joining us today. Oh, no problem. Well, you took a bit of a unique path to being an NFL player, honing your skills in NFL Europa, then the Arena League, and finally the Canadian Football League. And actually, Tom, you're the first NFL player since 1970 to register quarterback sacks in four leagues and in three different countries. So my question to you is, can you tell the fans how those experiences helped you prepare for the NFL? <laughs> well, yeah, I've been really playing in, uh, I say, CFL. CFL pretty much gave me the most experience in the past session just because it's more predominantly a passing system up there, you know, and pretty much every down can be a throwing down, you know. So I think that playing that shift uh, helped me hone the skills as a pass rusher using your hands, being able to explode through the line of scrimmage after beating the guy. You know, also, you know, working with Coach Patterson, you know, he, he basically changed a little bit, tweaked a few things in my game that for the most part been working for me and staying on track, you know, not trying to use too much finesse, you know, being able to run down the outside of the guard, you know, making him sit hard, but then use the speed and athleticism to either work inside or push him back and snatch him down. So, so I think those things really over the period of time all helped me, you know, because I think I, I snatched a little bit from each coach that I actually played for. So, you know, overall, I think there's, I guess, a collective group of talent, you know, as in coaches that molded me to, to the day. Well, I do have to ask you, when it comes to coaches, when you look at your arena league experience, I know some of those players actually play a little bit of offense and defense, so I wanted to find out, do we need to put in a good word for you for a red zone threat with North Turner? <laughs> Not at all, man. I, I'm going to stick to defense, man. I've, I've never played offense. I respect those guys as in the tight ends and the defense alignment that go in at fullback and release out into the flat and stuff, man. I'm going to leave that to them, man. I'm, I'm good at rushing uh, guards and stopping the run with the, you know, the defense. Well, obviously, though, if you were on defense, you sacked a quarterback, that ball's on the ground, you do know how to pick it up and go the other way, right? Oh, definitely. I'm not to run straight, you know. It's just the cutting and the breaking down that I'm going to have a problem doing, you know. Sounds good. Well, this season's really been a breakout year for you, and after just eight games, your five sacks in 2014, it's already matched your sack total in your previous 44-game NFL career. And more impressive is that you've had sacks in each of your last three games. And what is it, Tom, about the defensive scheme that allows you to get, really as a defensive tackle, to get such opportunity to get after the passer? I think it's just working as a unit, you know, a uh, collective unit as in the D-line, being able to practice and going against our offensive alignment and our defensive alignment, being able to work together and play off each other. You know, I'm with Griff on one side, and he see me go high on a rush, you know, he know that he can come underneath and that I'm going to cover him, you know. Same thing if I see him going underneath, I know that I can cover him on the outside. So it's all about, you know what I'm saying, uh, a collective group working together and being able to identify how the, how the quarterback is trying to play the game. If you got a quarterback that's trying to get outside and trying to, get to the perimeter and throw the ball, being able to have your hands go up the fence post uh, high enough to the quarterback that you have to step up and make him uncomfortable. Or if you got a quarterback that's trying to step up in a pocket, you know, having a presence in there with the D tackles, being able to push the guards back to make him uncomfortable. And I think this year we've been doing that as a unit and, you know, we've all been falling on sacks. You talk about being a unit, being a team. You have an unusual configuration for the NFL. You really have an eight-man rotation on the defensive line during game day. How has that helped the team be more successful in stopping the opposing teams? Man, it gives you an advantage for the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, no one got gassed out, you know, so you can pretty much still be on the full and being able to sell out at the last minute. You know, if you got the last two minutes, you need your guys to be rested to be able to do a 8 to 12 play drive in a two minute drive. So I think it, it, it's an advantage to us to be able to, for everybody on the defensive line to be able to work and move fast, you know, and the offensive line and then have that luxury of swapping out. So by the fourth quarter, we're still juiced up and being able to outwork them. Well, the fans appreciate it. You know, as we talk about sacks, and you have in five already, I don't know if you know this, but the sack uh, record for a season for a defensive tackle is 18 and a half, and it's held by former Minnesota Viking Keith Ballard. And based upon your midseason performance so far and your trajectory and where you're going with a sack a game, should we call Keith and let him know that his sack record's in jeopardy? <laughs> man, I just take it one game at a time, man. If that's something that I accomplish, man, it'll be a big accomplishment in my career, you know. But right now, I just try to stay focused on the game at hand right now and, you know, try to beat my opponent. If I get a chance to get a one-on-one and if I get to get a sack, two sacks, 
facts or whatever, you know, I'm happy for it, but I can't look the whole way down my week 16 and, and also hope for 18, you know. So if it happens, you know, you'll be the first person I talk to after. So. There you go. We were the ones that predicted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that you have just concluded your afternoon practice there. And for the fans, can you tell us what types of things do you do on a Wednesday in preparation for a Sunday game? And is your work day over after that practice? Um, on Wednesday, is usually first and second down uh, as a defensive lineman. You have to prepare for the type of running scheme that the offense is going to have. Washington this week, they're a real flat line type of offense, which if you don't know, that means that the offensive lineman pretty much bucket step and go lateral instead of more downhill power than more lateral. So today we just had to adjust from last week where it was more downhill and double team. This team right here is going to try to outrun you and give the, the running back the option of cutting the ball or you know, bouncing it outside. So it's, it's a small adjustment that we make every Wednesday, uh, I guess, dictated by the, the offensive scheme of the opponent that we're playing the next week. And, you know, nah, your day is never ending, actually, man. Uh, once we get finished with practice, though, you're rolling right into meetings and you got more meetings, man. You know, you get off around about 4.35 o'clock, and after that, you know, you got to take your work home because there's only so many hours in the day that you can actually put in film time at work. You know, so you got to take your work home, man, you know. Start breaking down your opponent that you're going to be going against, your one on one, how he sets, what's his strengths, what's his weaknesses, you know, formations and stuff. So, man, you know, it never ends. You know, when you're in football season, you're locked in pretty much seven days out of the week, man, trying to uh, get an edge on your opponent, you know. So, we've been trying to do that more often on defense, you know, and we try to use different uh, tactics of doing it, working out with each other, or film study at someone's house every week. So, you know, we're trying to put in the, the house that nobody sees, you know in that extra extra hour every week. Yeah, it just means a little bit different. When most people go home, they say, I'm going to go home and watch some TV. Well, you're watching a video screen, but it's not exactly TV, it sounds like. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Not at all. It's all breakdown film on the opponent. Yeah, well, Tom, you played for a New Orleans Saints team that was a regular participant in the playoffs during your three seasons there. When you look at this Vikings team that you're on, what are the things that you see that make you optimistic about this being a playoff team in the near future? Everybody's hungry. You got players in every position that's hungry for success. Everybody that's in the work every day. Guys coming out, playing hard, focused on that goal at hand. You know, you don't have a lot of harsh playing. You don't have guys going half speed every day. It's hard work. It goes them pull out the best in us, even when guys don't feel like doing it. You know, you just got to still push through it. You know what I'm saying? Grind out. And it shows on, on Sunday, you know, guys are more physical. Guys are out there running longer, faster. You know, we've, we've had a little bad look here and there, but... The effort, the effort is there, you know. Yeah. Effort is there. That's something you can't teach. That's something that you couldn't get in here being birthed, you know, as an athleticism. It's something that's a will, you know. I think this team got the will to win, you know. We just got to put it together. I think we're going to have a better second half than first half. That's terrific. Well, this week you play the Washington Redskins at home at TCF Bank Stadium. With a little bit of a question mark about who's going to start at quarterback for the Redskins. And, and, Tom, does your role and responsibility in the game Sunday change if you're playing against a mobile quarterback like an RG3 as opposed to a more traditional pocket quarterback like Colt McCoy? Um, my role doesn't change. My role is to uh, get the quarterback on his back at any means. But the way in doing that changes, you know, uh, when you have a uh, a mobile quarterback that likes to roll out defense, we have to be more disciplined in our rush lanes that we don't, I guess, gamble too much on trying to make wide moves or, you know, try to go underneath too fast. That opens up throwing lanes, all lanes that he's a mobile guy that can run through it, you know. So I think with a mobile quarterback, you just got to be more disciplined in your rushing lanes so that you don't open up lanes for him to take advantage of you. Right. Well, Tom, as we wrap up our conversation today, i got to ask you a weather question. And I know you played your high school and college ball in Mississippi and then played in the Dome in New Orleans. Have you started to think about those games outdoors at TCF Bank Stadium coming up in the next two months? And how do you go about handling extreme cold temperatures? Man, I try not to think about it. You know, <laughs> guys are there for years. They keep drilling in my head, letting me know they're going to have a, a tough time adjusting to those. But, you know... I just try to make sure that I layer up, you know, try to prepare myself as best as possible and get myself mentally prepared also to go out there and run around. And I think practice will help, you know. Being outside, you know, Coach Zimmer, I think we probably had one indoor practice since I've been here, you know. The rest of it has been outside, and that's the genius to the madness, I guess, man. Guys guys are pouting about going outside. It's real cold or it's all wet, but I think it'll pay off in the, at the back end of the season. So, 
you know, I'm just going out there and I'm taking it one day at a time and, you know, trying to get acclimated as best as possible. But I think after, you know, after after you win it, you know, for at least one game, I think I'll be okay. I'll be able to adjust to it. Sounds good. Well, Tom, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with VikeFans.com today. And our members want to wish you good luck on Sunday, and we sure hope to see a lot of number 92 in the Washington Redskins backfield. I appreciate it. Thanks. You bet.